Uh, good morning, St. James. Bill Clark here again on this year's Stewardship Committee, uh, introducing to you John Sloan, many of you may know. Uh, John works at Warden Smith um, and is also on the Foundation Board for St. James. Uh, John, say good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bill. Good to see you. Good to, good to have you. Thanks for your help here. We just want to talk about, um, John, appreciated stock gifts to the church, and, and I thought uh, I, I'd use you for some expertise, but I just want to share uh, the story from Happy Clark and myself. You know, we recently did our pledge uh, fully through appreciated stock gift, and it was really the it, it, people are fearful. You get anxiety. How does this happen? How does that happen? And it was really easy. Um, called Maria. Maria gave me the contact for our church as to who to make the gift through. Uh, called our broker and said, hey, can you pick the best appreciated stocks that we have? and a value of approximately this amount and call this person and get that done. Um, 24 hours later, we got notice this transfer had been made from our stock broker. And 24 hours later, we got notice from the church, we've received your stock gift with a present day value of this amount. Um, that easy, is it? Is it that easy all the time? But that's the beauty of, of gifting stock from a pack standpoint it is that simple it's a, it's phone calls and perhaps signing a piece of paper here and there for the parishioner but once the decision is made to give appreciated stock it really is straightforward and simple and most of the burden is on the broker to pick the stock and the church to sell it and take advantage so practically it's a pretty easy it's a very easy thing to do uh, and very beneficial to the church and the parishioner the reason for that is the, the income tax benefits of giving appreciated stock are significant. So just by way of background, if I were to decide that I wanted to give a certain amount of money to the stock and you to the church and, and use appreciate use stock to make the gift, if I sell that stock myself and it has appreciation, I'm going to pay capital gains tax on the gift. So let's just use numbers to make this simple. Let's just say I wanted to, I had $10,000 in my mind and I decided to use some IBM stock that I bought for $1,000. I sell the IBM stock for $10,000. I've got to pay 28.5% tax on the $9,000 of appreciation. So once I net out the tax I've paid, I'm giving the church less than I intended to give. If I make that a gift of the IBM stock worth $10,000 directly to the church through the simple process that you would walk through that Happy and you uh, took advantage of, then the church receives the stock because it's a qualified charity. It pays no income tax. So it gets the stock worth $10,000, sells it, and the church benefits from a full $10,000. And I've avoided paying 28.5% tax on the appreciation, an extremely beneficial tool, not only for you know, taking advantage of the income tax side today, but also frankly, for the right person, it can avoid estate tax in the future because you're giving assets now with no income tax consequences and reducing your overall estate. So there's income tax and long-term estate tax benefits to, uh, to these transactions. Really, really powerful stuff. That's, that's, that's a great summary. And, and a lot of that's how we looked at it. I'll be honest with you, I was writing the check <laughs> and and so I was watching that out of my checkbook every month. I'm not looking at that anymore. And it's and it's a it, it's an asset that we have that we don't think about, we don't touch, we don't play with. We think about it for our long term health. But I've still got a lot of years left before I'm going to worry about pulling money out of the stock market. And, and so it was helpful there. And then, quite honestly, um, I, I, Happy and I discussed it, and we thought we can do more by doing it this way than we might otherwise. Because again, it wasn't coming out of my day-to-day -day cash flow. It was coming out of some uh, potentially smart investment we made. Um, and, and, and so we felt better there. It, it wasn't painful cash flow. We got a tax benefit. We were able to do more and, and that helps us and it helps the church even more. I mean, it sounds like a win-win to me. How about you? Good. It's a good situation. And just real quick, because you are on the foundation board, th this is another way to help St. James grow the foundation balance, which is really a number I was on Bestry. Um, we want that at 15 million one day for, we, we own one square block. 
we want it up there. Maybe I'm calling out the wrong number for you, but we want it up there. And this is another way for folks to do it today on a regular basis, or as you say, as you know, they look at um, death benefits down the line. Absolutely, the, the, these types of gifts can, can qualify for your annual pledge or a gift to the foundation to support the long time, the long term. Uh, repair and expenses of the church of the on which the foundation primarily is focused. There's a lot of very positive reasons to make these types of gifts to the church, not only for yourself and tax avoidance, but also for covering goals with the church, whatever they may be for each particular par parishioner. Perfect, perfect. John, thank you for this. Um, great story. Um, ladies and gentlemen, St. James, if you have any questions on this, please call Maria at the church. Um, that's all I did, and it happened very quickly, um, very calmly, very quietly, uh, and my wallet didn't change one single uh, inch in depth, nor did my checking account. So, John, thank you again for your time, and uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you, Bill.